Whenever you call someone on Instagram, you get some sort of an animation like this with the DP in the center and these colorful rings of dots rotating around the DP just like this. When I saw this, I thought, could we create this using simulation nodes? And that's how we came up with this tutorial. With that, let's actually go through the steps to create this all within Blender. Since we're using geometry nodes, the first thing that we'll do is bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and we're gonna zoom in and select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we essentially want to first create the ring of dots and then we'll simulate them to create more and have them move outward. So let's press shift A and search for a curve circle. Of course you could use a mesh circle as well but I'll use a curve circle for now. I'm going to rotate this about the x-axis so I'll search for a transform geometry node, plug that in right here and rotate it about the x-axis by 90 degrees. Now I don't want this to obviously be a curve, I want them to be points so I'll press shift A and search for a curve to points node and then I'll plug that in and now I want to match the count with this resolution. Of course, you could change the count accordingly. And if you can't see anything, let me just zoom in. So you can see that if the count is something like 10, you just have 10 points over here. So as long as you keep it equal to the resolution, it'll still be perfectly circular. If you were to try and increase the resolution, you can start seeing how the actual jaggedness comes in. So if I was to have a resolution of 16 and a huge count, you can see that the lines or at least the points are not going to be in a perfect circle. They're going to follow the edges that are created from this curve. So be sure that you take care of that when you create it. Now I think I'm going to be using 32 points itself so I'll keep it at 32 and 32. Now that I have the points I can go ahead and start capturing a few attributes for these points. The first attribute that I do want to capture is the actual radius or at least I want to set the radius. So let's press shift A and search for a set point radius and that way I can actually define what the radius of each point is. So maybe we'll start off with 0.05 itself and as the animation goes the radius has to keep decreasing. The next attribute that I need is a color for each of these. So I'll take take care of that entire section within the texturing part of the animation. For now, let's start off the simulation. So let's press shift A and search for a simulation zone. And then we're going to go ahead and take this point, plug it into the input and take the output from the simulation output and plug it into the group output. So now everything that happens within here is going to repeat every single frame. So the first thing that I want is to move these outward along their normals. Now, if we just search for a set position node, we can actually manipulate their position and we have to see how we want to offset it. If we were to take just the position vector of each of these, you'd get an arrow pointing from the center to this particular point. If we move it along that same arrow, it will be moving normally outward, which will make this circle expand. So we can actually do that very easily by using a position node and searching for a vector map so that we can scale it down. So let's take this vector map, take the position, plug it into the first socket and change this from add to scale. Now we'll scale it down to something like 0.95 and we'll plug this into the offset. So now if you were to play the simulation, you can see it just zooms out. So obviously this scale is way too large. Let's scale it down to 0.1. And now let's go back and play the animation and you can see how we get the actual circle to be growing outward. So that's exactly what I wanted. It looks perfect. So we're going to go ahead and use exactly this. However, I think this is still too strong. So let's go with 0 0.01 and that should be good enough. We can change this at any point of time, but we'll leave it like this for now. The next problem is that we need these to also start rotating as they go outward. So to make them rotate, we have to go ahead and use another set position, but the offset has to be according to the tangent of the position that it's in. So we can actually get the tangent very easily by taking the position vector and then rotating rotating that position vector by 90 degrees. So let's press shift A and search for another set position. We'll plug that in after the first set position. And now for the offset, we'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a vector rotate node. Now we can rotate the position since we have the position right here. We'll take this and plug it into the vector and I want to rotate it about the Y axis. So instead of axis angle, I'll just choose Y axis and I'll keep the center at 0, 0, 0 itself because it does not matter. We only care about the direction and then we'll change the angle to 90 degrees. So now that we have the position vector and we've rotated it by 90 degrees and we're going to use this as the offset, we're going to have it move tangential. But again, I don't want it to move all the way the entire entire position length. So we're going to scale it down by taking this scale node, pressing shift D and then plugging this in right here. And now we can plug this into the offset. So now let's go ahead and play the animation and you can see that it's starting to rotate as well. So that looks perfect. Maybe I want to rotate it a bit more. So I'll just go ahead and increase this scale to maybe 0.03 instead of 0.01. So let's see how it looks. And that looks like it's rotating much faster, which is exactly what I want. Now, the further out this gets, the more it's going to rotate. Along with that, the further out it gets, the faster it's going to move out 
because we're using the position vector itself. So actually, I do want this to rotate faster as it goes outward, but I don't want it to move outward faster as well. I want it to move out at a constant rate. So to take this position vector and make sure that it moves out at a constant rate only, I'm actually going to press Shift A and search for a vector math node and use the normalize value. If you want to know what all of these operations of the vector math does, check out this video over here where I explain many of the vector math operations that's commonly used so that you can visually understand exactly why we use the vector math node. So now let's take this normalize, plug that in right here. And now when we play the animation, you should see that it moves out at a constant speed and the velocity does not accelerate as it goes outward. But the speed at which it rotates does keep increasing because we're using the position itself. So that looks absolutely right. Now remember when you normalize this, you might have to change this scale value to match up with what you want. I think I'm actually going to make it 0.02. And I think this is pretty good. Maybe I'll go with 0 0.1, 0.15. So now that you have this set up, we have to start reducing this radius for the points. So that's also very simple to do. We can use another set point radius node. So just search for the set point radius, plug that in right here. And for the radius, we're going to take the original radius, which is present in a separate node called radius. And we're going to actually scale this down. So again, use a math node and then change it to multiply and multiply it by a small value. Maybe we can multiply it by 0 0.95 and plug that into the radius. So now every frame, the radius is going to get scaled down by 0 0.95 and then it's going to become the new radius. So let's go ahead and watch this play out. And you can see it slowly becomes smaller and smaller. Now, if the radius becomes too small, I want them to disappear. So I'll go ahead and move these over to the side and I'll press Shift A and search for a delete geometry. So now I'm going to delete the geometry if this radius is lesser than a specific value. So let's search for a compare node and compare the radius value with some other value. Let's go with less than 0 point, maybe 0 one. And then let's plug this into the selection. Now when you play the animation, you should see that after it reaches that tiny size, it's just going to get deleted. So that looks absolutely right. You could always play around with this. Maybe I want it to be a bit smaller. So 0 0.08 is what I'll go with. And now it becomes really small and then disappears. So that's absolutely perfect. And now the next thing that I need is to add in more dots. So to add in more dots, the first thing that I'll do is come back to the start and I'll use a switch node to switch between this and the joined in version. So let's press shift A and search for a joined geometry so that I can have the current dots added in with the new dots. So let's take this and the new dots are going to come from here. So let's take this and plug that in right there. But I want this to occur once every half a second or one third of a second. So let's press shift A and search for a scene time node. And let's check if the frame number is equal to a certain value or a multiple of that value, then we'll add in this join geometry. So let's press shift A and search for a math node and change this from add to modulo. And remember modulo gives us the remainder after division. So let's take the frame, plug it in here, and we're going to check every maybe 25th frame, we want a new set to be added in. So let's add in the number 25 here. And we have to check if the remainder is zero. So let's search for another compare node. We're going to change this from greater than to equal. We're going to plug this into the first socket and we're going to check if it's equal to zero. Only then should it get joined in. So let's search for a switch node and plug that in right here. And if it is true, then we want it to get joined in. So let's plug that right here. This is the false. And we can take this and plug that into the actual switch socket. So now when we play the animation again from the start, you should be able to see new versions coming in every 25 frames. That's absolutely fine. I actually want this to be rendered out at 30 frames per second. So I'll go to my output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. And now I can go ahead and restart the animation. So that looks perfect. But I think I want these to be present for a bit longer because in the Instagram calls, there are three of these that are present at any point of time. So to do that, I can just scale down the radius a bit more slowly. So since we're scaling down the radius over here, instead of 0 0.95, maybe we'll go with 0 0.975. So now let's go back to frame zero and restart the simulation. And now you can see that there are three of these present at any point of time. In fact, I do want four of them to be present because the first one is going to appear from behind the logo. So let's change this from 0 0.975 to 0 0.985. So now let's go ahead and restart the simulation. And I think this is absolutely perfect. Okay, maybe it's a bit too much. So maybe 0 0.98. And now you can see that there are four and that is absolutely fine. So since we have all of this set up and working, we can actually convert these from points to real geometry. All of that is going to happen outside the simulation output. So let's go ahead and press shift A and search for an instance on points node. Plug that in right here. And for the instance, we're going to use an icosphere. Now let's plug this into the instance, but 
the radius is going to be way too large and it's all going to be the same size. So let's for now increase the subdivisions to something like three. Make sure that it's shade smooth by pressing shift A and searching for a set shade smooth. We'll plug that in right there and then we'll reduce the radius to maybe 0.1. Now for the scaling, we're actually going to use the radius value. So let's take this radius and plug that into the scale so that we have it actually reduce in size. But again, it's going to become very small. So now we can reduce the radius back to one. So that way we're multiplying this by the actual radius, which gives it the correct size. So that is absolutely perfect. And I think that looks good. The last thing that we have to do in this section is adding in the material. So let's press shift A, search for the set material node, plug that in right here and choose the default material. Now to start off with the shading section, we'll first switch our viewport shading to render and we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then we're going to have to capture an attribute for every single one of these points, which we already spoke about before. So let's come all the way back here. Let's move these a bit towards the side and we want to make sure that we capture the attribute after we convert it to points. So we'll press shift A and search for a store named attribute so that we we can use this in the shader editor as well. Let's plug that in right here and we want to store a color. So let's change this from float to color and we want to store it for every single point. Now I'm going to change the name to just col for color and for the value I'm going to go ahead and use a Voronoi texture and I'm going to use the basic Instagram colors that were in the Instagram app itself. So I'll press shift a and search for a color ramp and I'll take the distance and plug that into the factor. Now I'm going to bring these in a bit and just add in a few more stops by pressing this plus button and I'll change these to the colors that I want. So I know that there should be some sort of a blue, there should be some sort of a pink, purple, yellow, and red. So let's, for the time being, plug this color into the value and then set up the actual material so that we can see it and change this accordingly. So let's just bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create another window and change this to the shader editor. Then we'll press N to remove the side panel. And if you can't see the nodes, just press period on your numpad to centralize them. If that doesn't work, you can always make sure that you actually have a material set here. You can use the drop down to select the material. And for now, we're going to go ahead and press shift A and search for an attribute node. And the name is going to be call itself. But remember, we want it to be separate for each instance. So we're going to change this from geometry to instancer. Now let's take this color and plug it into the base color. And now you should be able to see something on each of these dots. So right now everything is black, which implies that this attribute is not being sampled correctly. Let's just make sure that we plug this into the emission as well and then figure out what's going wrong. So often if it's all absolutely correct but you still don't see it you just have to restart the simulation from frame zero and that should fix it so now i'm able to see the different colors black as well as white colors so i can go ahead and change these to the actual colors that i want before that i'll go ahead and change my world properties to change the background all the way to black and i'll switch off overlays and i'll delete the default light as well now with this selected let's choose the colors in the geometry node editor itself maybe i'll change this black to a bluish color this could be the purplish color and similarly i'll just go ahead and choose all the different colors that there needs to be within my simulation. And you can see, even though we have the colors, it's not being updated. So we have to go ahead and just play the simulation and now it works. So I think I need to make sure that this is not at linear, but at ease that we have a nice gradient of the colors. And I think that looks fine. I might play around with the distribution of these just before rendering, but again, it's up to you. I think I'm also going to reduce the size of my Voronoi texture down to something like one so that they're much more evenly spaced out. So I think that looks fine. Now to make the bloom even more prominent, back in the actual shader editor, down for the emission strength, you can increase it up to something like three or even 30 to make the bloom really strong and intense. Apart from just the bloom, we can now go ahead and bring in the Instagram logo. So for that, make sure you have your import images as planes add-on enabled from the edit preferences menu, and then press shift A images, choose import images as planes and choose your Instagram logo or whichever DP logo or whatever you want, and make sure that it's set to emit when you import it. So make sure that you have emit selected for the material type. And I'm actually going to increase the strength to two so that there's some nice bloom. I'm going to keep the blend mode at blend itself so that the transparency is actually transparent. Then I'll choose import images as planes. And to make sure that it's facing the camera, I'll just press RZ 90 and then I can just scale it up and move it forward on the Y axis a bit. So that way, when I play the animation, the first thing that appears will appear from behind it. And I think that looks absolutely perfect, exactly the way I wanted it to look. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and place our camera by selecting the camera, pressing Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press zero to go into our camera view, followed by G Y to just bring it back till everything fits in. Now, of course, you don't have to render this with the logo. You can always render this out just like this with a transparent background. Background, 
or if you want the bloom to be enabled, you can actually check out this video in which I show you how to render transparent videos with bloom. And you can always render this out as a video with a black background and use the Luma key to remove the background. Whichever one you choose, you have to make sure that it's a perfect loop. So to convert this into a perfect loop, you're going to have to first bake the simulation. So go to the physics properties with the object selected. And once you have the object selected, you should see a new simulation nodes section appear over here expand it and choose bake. To bake, you have to save the file. So press Control S and save it. Once it's saved, click bake and make sure that before you bake, you have all of your animation defaults set. And in fact, you should do that right at the beginning, which is making sure your frame rate is 30 frames per second. Now that it's baked, we obviously want it to start from an area where all of these particles have already reached the end. So I think the first set of particles disappear only after around frame 75. So let's make sure that it's some frame after frame 75. So let's go with frame 100. That is going to become our start frame. And it's going to be one frame after that to make it a perfect loop. So we'll go with frame 101. And we have to make sure that the total number of frames is a multiple of the number of frames after which we're adding in new particles. So if you remember in our geometry node tree, we were adding in a new set of particles every 25 frames. The difference between these has to be a multiple of 25. So in this case, we have 150, which is a multiple of 25. So it works. Of course, you should not be considering this 101 it has to start from one frame before so between 100 and 250 we have 150 frames which is a multiple of 25 so it will be a perfect loop and to make it seamless we have to make sure that we start from frame 101 so that there isn't a repeating frame so now when you play the animation you should have a perfectly seamless loop and you can always add in the instagram logo or your own logo it's completely up to you and once you're happy with the way everything looks you can go to the output properties save it wherever you want the double slash will save it in the same folder in which your blend file is saved. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4. And output quality, I'm going to choose Perceptually Lossless. And with that, we can go ahead and press Render Animation. I hope this was a fun one to tackle and it was a simple simulation nodes setup. So if you are starting in simulation nodes, this should be a fun tutorial for you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. And if you liked the video, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I upload videos every single day and I'm sure there's something or the other waiting to be discovered by you. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.